take me to church every Sunday and Wednesday. And as far back as I can remember, daily Bible reading has been a habit that was instilled in, into me at a very early age. Now, I was a fairly obedient child growing up. I didn't often disobey outwardly. But looking back, I see that even when I was obeying outwardly and doing the right thing externally, I was doing it for the wrong reasons, either because I don't make it out of a consequence or look good towards others. And I would not be doing it with a cheerful attitude. I would be doing it with a sinful attitude. I was really just doing it to look right on the outside and try to earn others' favor. And I did profess to know Christ back then, but looking back, I see that I never really had a personal relationship with him. I viewed him as just a, a my fire insurance, per se. And I never really had any assurance that I was in a right standing with God. I remember going to bed many nights and trying to pray something to the effect of, God, I think I am saved, but if I'm not, then please do save me. I was never really sure whether or not God would accept me because I was relying on my own works. And I now know that my own works can never please a holy and righteous God. Then one night, uh, August 6, 2007, my family and I went to a Sunday night service at the Bible Church of Little Rock to hear the testimonies of some students who had gone on a mission trip with the youth group that past summer. I remember sitting in the pews and listening to one particular student who got up and said that while he was on a mission, the mission trip, he had realized that he was really living a lie or just playing the Christian game and that he wasn't actually saved, that he was instead of relying on what Christ had done for him. He was relying on what he was trying to do for Christ. I went home that night and I tried to read a little bit before bed, as I typically did. But I really couldn't concentrate on my reading, because there was a battle going on inside my head that night. I realized that I was not in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, that night there were two voices in my head. On the one side was a voice telling me that I could just put it off. I didn't need to go to my parents and talk to them like the, the next day or later, sometime in the future. But there was also another voice that told me that I was not guaranteed another day. That God didn't guarantee me that fact that I'd even make it through the night. That night I, I, er, I yielded to what I believed now to be the Holy Spirit's urging. I went to my parents and explained to them my situation and accepted Christ into my heart that night. But for me, the issue wasn't so much repenting of my ungodliness per se as my fake godliness, which is really no godliness at all my legalism, or my attempt to earn God's favor just through external works and doing the right thing. And that night I realized for the first time in my life that I can contribute nothing to my salvation. No matter how much good I do, it's never enough to fulfill the requirements of a perfect and holy God. And I, can only, I realized that I can only be saved and have become in a right relationship with Him by trusting in what He did for me on that cross. Now that I am saved, I still strive to obey my parents, but now instead of just doing the right thing outwardly because it will make me look good, I do it because I believe it is the right thing to do. I still go to church every Sunday and Wednesday and read my Bible each morning, but I genuinely enjoy doing these things, as well as singing hymns and listening to sermons and talking about the things of God, because by them I get to know the God who sent His Son, His perfect Son, from the glories of heaven down to this earth to die for my sins. Uh, the Christian life is a is warfare, it's a spiritual battle, and although I do oftentimes get tripped up by the flaming arrows of the devil, I do have the confidence that comes with knowing that I'm on the winning side of this battle. Although I do sin often, I believe that these actions are not indicative of an unregenerate nature, but rather are contrary to my new redeemed nature that Christ has given me. And Christ is working in me through the Holy Spirit to help humble me and have me ask for forgiveness when I do sin. And is helping me to get rid of, to help sanctify me and try to get rid of the remnants of sin in my life. I know I'll never be perfect on this earth, but he is helping me to become progressively more and more like him. Now, I know that, and even though that confessing sins to others and Humbling myself isn't particularly pleasant at the time. I now know that the sweetness of Christ far outweighs any temporary pleasure that sin has to offer. I know that in a group of this size, many of you are saved, but I also know that some of you are not saved. 
And for those of you who are not, I, I pray that God would use this testimony, the same way that he used another testimony in my life at least five years ago, as a wake-up call to, to get you to realize that you are still in your sin and that you are still relying on your own works. I know from personal experience that your own works can never suffice. And so I would urge you, if you are relying on yourself to put yourself in a right relationship with God, then that's never going to work. You can never fulfill his requirements. So I urge you to repent this very moment. God doesn't guarantee you another day. Put your trust in him, and by his grace, he will save you from your sin. So I stand before you today in the waters of baptism, not trusting in this water to save me, but using it as an outward representation of an inward transformation that, by God's grace, I do believe he has worked in my heart. Caleb is uh, one of the, the faithful students who prays for uh, the messages every Wednesday night that I give, and uh, this morning before uh, we came into the waters of baptism, I prayed for Caleb as well, and uh, that his testimony would be used in, in your life. And uh, for those of you who don't know the Savior, you've heard enough today to be accountable. Uh, you've heard the gospel and the, these four testimonies. You, you've heard enough to be accountable before Jesus Christ. You have no excuse. And uh, it's my prayer that, that this day, uh, this Easter Sunday, uh, would be the, the day that you can point back and say, this is the day that I truly bow the knee to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's my prayer for you today. And Caleb, because of your testimony in Jesus Christ, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.